Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl and I. And your boy, Stanley. It is taking everything in me to be on this camera tonight. Uh, I am so tired. I had rollers too. in my hair just now, ready for bed and all that good stuff. And I was like, oh, skit. We got to watch a show <laughs> and do a goddamn review. But before we get into this, I need a favor. Y'all know... Y'all know us black folk, we always need a favor. Yeah. I don't be asking y'all for that. For only, only we need you, we ask you. But we really do need your help. Because YouTube is on that ish again. And we try not to let that affect our channels and whatnot. But we have one channel that is pretty much a dead channel. But our viral video is on that channel. And this is the second time that we've had to up re-upload this, um, this video, video. Because they've been playing with the monetization on that particular video. Well, the video gets views. It has over 500,000 views on it and whatnot. But it's on a channel that we don't use, so it does not have the subscriber count. So now with these new YouTube rules, if you don't have a thousand subscribers and a certain amount of um minute, uh, minute views, watch whatever, time. Watch, yeah. watch time, they're going to take away your monetization privileges, your YouTube partnership, all that good stuff. All the perks that comes along with having a viral video on YouTube in the first place. So what we need you to do is right after you hear me stop talking, hit that icon right there. I don't need you to actually look at the video, like the video, do any of that. Mm. I need you to subscribe to that channel. Yep. You will never probably see anything pop up as nope. a new notification on that channel because we don't use it. Yep. But I do need your subscription on that yeah, cause, channel. Because him and we, we were We're like 000. 40 away. Yeah, 40 something subscribers away. So once we get to that point, when you get over there and you see a thousand. Um, now keep going just because YouTube you like to take people's nice. subscribers just, too. Just build it up. Yeah. yeah. So. I'm counting on y'all to make that happen for us. And if not, if you did not catch the iCard, it will be down in the description bar. Yeah. Bello. So let's get into this. Undercover Vice. This was much better than last week. Still. Yeah. Just, just, just. Still Tyler. Yeah. It's, it's, it still ain't at its maximum potential that it used to be. He needs to hire me. Yeah. So we can make this. But anyway. So we got Hannah. Now, y'all know last week we left off with Hannah walking down the hallway and she saw that Benny was holding Demonica's hand. As she would call it, you're holding the snake by the tail. So, she basically tells Benny, listen, you still sleeping with this girl? Didn't I tell you to leave her alone? And Benny was like, listen, with all the stuff that I got going on, I need her. I need a snake like her in my corner. Yeah. So Hannah was like, listen, but but you don't know, Sway. You don't know the likings of these people and what yeah, you're dealing so they with. Yeah, they dangerous. Them and the criers, they dangerous. So, of course, Benny, he's like, listen, Mom, don't know what you're talking about or not. And at some point, the nurse that came out there, now, I didn't hear what she said, but I thought she said, are you Mr. Harrington? Harrington, yeah. That was, that was sound like she said, but, you know. And Benny was like, you know, go ahead and tell her, not I'm right now, I'm, I'm busy. busy. I said, oh, you about to set this winch off up in this hospital. But see, this is what I thought Benny was going to say. Um, Mom, I hear you and everything, and, you know, you, it sound good. Uh, but do you got any Johnny Cochran money to pay for me a good load? <laughs> huh? If you ain't got the money, <laughs> shut your goddamn lips. No disrespect, still love you. But if you come with the cash, the bread, and we can hire a good lawyer, I'll leave her alone. <laughs> but until then, I'm going to deer down until she get me out of this booze kit. For real, for real. So then, we got Hannah on her, okay, this is why I'm at the hospital tip. I'm here because little Quincy had like 10 pounds of skit on him when he we died. We don't know how he had on. He had, had on, yeah. look, he had on some army fatigue pajamas that had all kinds of pockets wow. in it. Because he had a lot of stuff going, I think I seen a PS2. <laughs> I mean, I seen a lot of stuff in the boy pockets. So. The letter was powerful though. She told Benny, said, listen. Even this baby knew that me and his mama needed to get right. Mm -hmm. And I need to go ahead and make amends with her. You know, we need to do something. Where is she? Benny says she over there at the Artesian Well Hotel. So, you ain't think about going over there, are you? Well, yes, I am. See, this will get on my nerve by Hannah. Just because it's your timing. You want to pooch your hot pots on over there and try to make amends and get your head chopped out. The worst thing is try to make amends with somebody that's already still that's pissed angry. off with you. Yeah. So that's what Benny said. Benny said this ain't the time. She's right in a time. bad place right yeah. now, you know. She don't want to see you. She don't want to do with you. But she went ahead and said, listen, we're going to go. And we're going to go to that hotel and we're going to see if this piece of hair gets stuck on this lip gloss one more time. <laughs> so um, 
And we see Candace downstairs at the Artesian Well Hotel, and she's basically lining up the dude, the John, for the night. Oh, yeah, she lined up the And bread. at first, when he started talking to her, I was like, is he an undercover? I mean, what's going on? Yeah, because he, he had was, that vibe. He had he that, did. Yeah, he his, did have that vibe. His vibe was real off. She read him down, told him, look, you married. You ain't no truck driver like you said you is. Because I don't see no calluses on your hands. You ain't lift a heavy thing in your life. But she said, let me tell you one thing. I'm a working girl and I'm expensive. So if you want to see me, be in my room in one hour. And when you come through the door, be on your knees. And that was turning homeboy all he the was way like, on. He was like, hey, alright, I'll be there. Yeah. So then we switch scenes and we see Landon and Charles Obama. Now, I guess that their version of getting turned up and going out for drinks meant right there. The I the thought they was going to a bar. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I thought they was going. It's like they was at what? the bar. They set up the bar in their room. <laughs> yeah, because so, I was expecting for them to be at the bar, you know, coast off, taking shots, laughing, joking, kidding around, um, getting a few more friends at the bar. Yeah, well, nothing. It was just them two. Yeah, it was at the hotel. They ain't... So Charles Obama obviously told Landon about this old girlfriend that he had that was psycho crazy. You know, caused him to jump ship, go to the military to get his life right mm -hmm. with Uncle Sam and the Lord. And he <laughs> said, you know, I went ahead and came out and, you know, I'm doing this thing now, whatnot. And Charles Obama, I mean, um, Landon was like, dude, you're like a woman magnet. You don't see how these women be looking at you out here on these streets, on these campaign trails. I mean, come on. You ain't hitting none of that. He said, nah, nah bro. This ain't worth it, man. I, I can't. Don't, yeah, I, don't, I can't. My life already. Just getting my life together. Yeah. I got these I got kids. Time, I ain't got time for these hoes. Yeah, like Bernie Mac said, you gonna help me watch these kids? <laughs> yeah. So he was like, no, I don't mix business with pleasure. You know, I can't do nothing like that. No, I like to keep things solid, tight, Landing. Now he throwing the bait out there. Talking about some. But if it was with the right person that was able to keep your secrets a really secure and safe place, you can go ahead and do something like that. I don't see anything wrong with that. So Charles Obama said, So is that what you, you be, be doing? doing? Out here? You be messing around with these with the ladies? With these chicken heads? He said, nah, bro, I ain't even like, like that. that. I said, no. Nope. He said, you ain't never got a room with me doing that. He said, Oh, okay. Say, huh. So then Charles Obama was still taking drinks. I mean, taking shots, doing what he was doing. And he's a heavyweight. Landon is a lightweight. So Landon over there in the chair just get ready to fade away. You know how? Yeah, he the one said, let's take shots with a next not shot. That's all he took was just a shot. So he fading out. Charles Obama, he's still over there. He ready to go. He tips it, but he ain't fading. Okay, so now it's time for Landon to leave the room. So Charles Obama can get him some good sleep because he got something to do tomorrow. And all of a sudden, we see Landon looking down there at Charles Obama's butt. And I said, this ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. Don't let Chucky catch you. So then he went over <laughs> there and pulled down the liquor and everything. Because he was like, listen, I got to clean this up before housekeeping come in here. Because, you know, we can't be leaving evidence around like this, you know. Because that'll be in the blogs the next and day. they'll take pictures. That, and we, that he's yeah. an alcoholic. Uh-huh, yep. <laughs> there was two glasses. Who's the lady no, no, in his life? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's no lipstick. So who's the, the man, man in his life? life? Yeah. So Landa said, no, we're going to go ahead and... um." Control this situation on right here. But Charles Obama did what every drunken, I'm fading away kind of person would do. Just break down, take they off your shirt. They just stop breaking and down in front of everybody. We yeah. all don't did it. We all don't see it. Yeah, bros do it too. Just break down. You know, you and be like, hold on, did I just get naked in front of my sister? <laughs> <laughs> yep, sure did. So that's what he was doing. He was taking off all his clothes. But Landon is over there getting his eye candy on. And he made it so goddamn obvious. I, I just knew Charles Obama was gonna catch him. Me too. He made it he was he was. I said he gonna drop that goddamn tray and then Chuck it gonna click in. Uh-huh. And you ain't gonna never leave that room. But it didn't happen like that. He got on up out of there. So then we see DA George. Well, June Tao. June Tao. June Tao went over there to the FEMA jail to go talk to Jeffrey. Basically asking Jeffrey, listen. Why did your mama toss you over here to me like a salad? That was too goddamn easy. That ain't even the way your mama flow. What's going on? Jeffrey said, well, first of all, my mama don't represent me, and I'm not talking to you without my a My daddy is my lawyer. He said, well, she said she represented you. No, she's lying. Mm-hmm. So then George started asking all these questions, you know, about this. You know, 
you know, do you know Judge, uh, what's her name, Boot? What's her last name? Bosch. Yeah, Judge Bosch. Justin's wife. Said, well, aren't you sleeping with her husband? You know, I'm really confused by this whole situation that's going on with you, your mama, and you got a fiance. And Jennifer Salisbury State told me, said, you were gay, so your mama know you gay, but you got a baby on the way. What the hell's going for, on, Jefferson? I need my lawyer. First of all, that's that's what I can't stand about them in the DA and, and, and all that. Like, yeah. They they go and they talk about everything else. What that guy do with the case? About him being gay, about his mama turning him in, and all that. What that got to do with the case? <laughs> you sounded like David when you said that. What yeah. that got to do with the case? What that got to do with the case? <laughs> Nothing got to do with the case about who he messing with and who he doing it with and when he doing it with. But then we see, um, what's the name? George Juntao. Juntao and what's the girl's name? Sarah are sitting over there in his office and he's looking through the paperwork and he's like, okay. Jeffrey is in jail for killing um, Quincy oh, Maxwell. And then mama turned him in. Mama turned him in. She laid up in the hospital bed. He said, this is one bucked up family. Yeah, so we got Jennifer Salison's body with a note on the say that a cryer did it. I just don't know. She was like, we got enough evidence right there to do an indictment. He said, mm -mm. He said, we do. But he said, I need something solid. He said, I don't been down this yeah, road with uh -huh. her before. Because she will find a way to wiggle out this one. And I, I need some DNA evidence. I need some Dana. <laughs> and I think she can get out of that too. Yeah. And like George was saying, George said, listen. I don't trade it. Don't trade places what I've been through. <laughs> I don't lost to this chick before. And I'm mm -hmm. not doing it again. Yep. So when Sarah was like, you know what? I'll go ahead and find you what you need. So we can lock this case down. And I'll be right back. But when she goes to leave up out of there. Who she runs to? Oscar Maya Wiener. He's so convenient. It's just like on Too Close to Home. Whenever the president wanted to talk to, um, what's her name? That dude came up, um, um, what was her name? God darn it. Anna. Anna. Talk to him. He's he coming out there with, with the God darn phone. The president wants to speak to you. She was like, I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> Say, you need to talk to him. So, Oscar will tell her, say, listen, get on the phone and you better do what he say. You better be there. So, Jim gets on the phone. Do you know who you're speaking with? J I mean, Jesus, the disciples. I mean, who? You know, announce yourself, fool. He talking about some. You don't remember my voice? Obviously, it wasn't that good, but she don't. <laughs> and we already know that we saw her in the preview with her hard parts in the air. So, yep, we know how this is about to go down. So he about to get her down so that he can get his way, find out what she know, so they can wiggle their way on up out of there. Like yep. George say, this ain't what you want. Yep. So then we see David. David over there at um his new house, setting up shop with old girl, Erica. David nose is wide open. David don't fix her, like Ashley Miller said, the driest spaghetti I ever seen. And I yep. said, look, he went to the deli and got that 99 cent French so, roll and just, just, and just it broke it in. He didn't, he didn't got no knives up in the piece to cut it. They make it real nice. And the edges go all jagged. <laughs> I said, did you at least put some butter on? <sighs> so they ate that little spaghetti dinner. And Erica's saying, listen, we need to get a little bit more going on up in here. And he says, about that. So you're going to take me up on my offer to move in here with me or not. Are we going to get the dog, the, the picket fence, maybe a couple of kids if we can't have them. I'll be a foster parent. I'll yeah. do whatever you, baby, just say you will. He said, uh, I go over to my condo <laughs> and get some furniture up in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, no, 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 no. What if, what if he, he followed me there? And I'm like, Erica, you put 20 on 10? Yeah, yeah, don't even, yeah, don't. So, they're sitting there still having this conversation. And she's telling him, listen, I don't think I should move in with you. We might get in here. We don't like each other. Da, 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 da. Playing the game. Because yeah. where you gonna go? You're homeless. You're just like Hannah. You might as well go over there with her. Yeah. At least you'll take the house. She won't. <laughs> she might just stay there with you. <laughs> she one of the people you got to trick her out. You be like, here's five dollars. <laughs> but Santa Claus gave you the five dollars. Yeah. Not your dad. No, 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 <laughs> no. No, you tell me that the Lord gave it to her. That's what you got to say. Say five dollars. You put the Lord on it and she be like, okay. I'll take it. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I did. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, 
Next thing we know, Erica gets startled because she see a police officer standing in the door. Now, Justin with Justin Timberlake with his... Oh, he, he done lost his His presence is driving me crazy right now. He's so unnecessary. He didn't even knock on the door. He's he just, just, standing, his... just standing outside like this, looking around as if he lived there. What and trying to, figure out, trying to figure out what kind of flowers I'm going to plant next. So, Erica was like, what the heck? So, David goes to the door. And he was like, hey, are you Jeffrey's father? I've been trying to get in touch with you. Look. Your wife turned to me. He down there in county. He in there for the murder of <laughs> Kristen <laughs> Maxwell. David was like, what the what? hell? What? And he said, and, yo, no, he didn't tell her that, that the, the Monica had been in an accident. No. Did he? No. No, no. George told Jeffrey. Told Jeffrey, yeah. I said, see, you tried to break that boy down while he up in that jail, but he ain't, <laughs> he didn't fold on him. So David went back to tell Erica. Now Erica is over there hiding, shaking, shaking, making up skit, just making up skit. And they gonna tell him I'm shaking because my ex boyfriend was a police, police officer. officer. So when did Candace become a police, police officer? Yeah, and and war. All right, I'll wait. No, I think what it was, Justin recognized. What I Justin think so will too. recognize. Her. I don't remember because Tyler be having us all over the place. I think I think so. he know who she is. So yeah, so she was hiding. So he said, listen, keys over there. Lock yourself in here when I leave. I got to go tend to my son. He goes to get in the G-Wagon and he calls Demonica and was like, listen here. Listen. You don't took it too goddamn far. You took it too goddamn far now. Answer your phone. Answer your phone. But she ain't gonna answer because nah. she playing the game. She all right. Ain't yeah. no wrong with her. Mm -hmm. She acting like she got smoking along. She all right. Yeah. So before Justin Timberlake could pull out the driveway, <laughs> Jeffrey's telephone rings because you know he got Jeffrey's phone. Well, it's Wyatt. Justin Timberlake told Je um told Wyatt, "Don't you ever, in your old entire life, call oh, well, his phone anymore?" You gonna tell somebody else not to call somebody else's phone? Uh -uh. Crazy as hell. So Wyatt said, "Listen, I don't know what kind of stalkerish stuff that you own, but put Jeffrey on the phone." Justin Timberlake said, "Listen, I done took and told you one more time. Call here again, and I'm gonna knock all the fronts out." <laughs> He said, you know what? I got one better. Hey, put, put Jeffrey on, on the, the phone. phone. He said, you at home? He said, yep. He said, okay, go on and drive your little pink, your little pink police car over here. Cause Justin told him, said, when I come over, I'm gonna bash your head in. Well, bring your little pink police car over here and do something. <laughs> I said, I said, I don't like why, but that was funny to me. That was funny. So I'm like, okay, so is he going to... I wouldn't even be mad if he killed Wyatt, though. Would y'all be mad if he killed Wyatt? Like, Wyatt is... Mm. Why is Wyatt there? He doesn't interact with anybody. Yeah. I mean, he's... I think he outlived his part. He did. Yeah. He should have stayed dead. Yeah. But that was a good comeback, though, if they had, if they had flipped it right. They could have, yeah. So, now we don't see what Catherine up to. See, Catherine... <laughs> she don't have... What's the guy's name? Derek. Derek. Derek came over there to her place after he was finished over there at Hannah's. She told me, so, oh, how much do I owe you? He said, oh, I got it covered under the warranty. I said, you better go ahead, Derek. Yeah. And she said, mm, so did you see Hannah? Yeah, I seen her. You know, she's, she's, she's nice. Did you get her number? Did she get yours? What, what happened? He, he said, said, no, I won't even like that. And I came over there to fix the pipe. He said, but I did notice there was some stuff around there that, that was unloosened and untight. I yeah. see what you're doing, uh -huh. Catherine. She was like, me? Oh, me? I don't know nothing. He said, that's the same thing Demonica could do when I go over her house. Just undo stuff, trying to get me to hook up with some other people, setting me up and whatnot. Catherine said, well, you can't trust her, but you sure you can, can trust, trust me. Barry said, listen, you know, it won't that type of party. But if I will leave you my, my number, number, you can get her to call me. Careful, no, 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 no. She's a southern girl. You got to chase her down. I said, well, I know that's right. <laughs> so, um, he, he, you know, he got the skinning and grinning and whatnot. And then Derek let it sneak out that, hey, you know, I hope Demonica recovers real fast. You know, that was messed up. Well, what's You're messed up? Her? Oh, she had a car accident. She <laughs> flipped the car and everything. Katha was like, well, daddy. <laughs> I said, don't you go run into a bedside. Please don't go run into a bedside. <sighs> but he said, yeah, I hope she get better soon. So now she knows. So then we see Melissa. Melissa's over there. Okay, so now we are really in Tyler Perry land. Because this girl has been pregnant. Forever. For like the last, what, two seasons? Like for real, for real. 
No lie. My real girlfriend in real life just had a baby today. Melissa's been pregnant longer than her. <laughs> yeah. And we and we ain't seen no I don't even see no stomach yet. So the doctor see. Listen, I'm about to go on a rabbit hole like James was saying. Don't y'all hate when y'all go to the doctor? And they ask you everything that's on that freaking chart. Why did I spend 15 minutes filling this skit out if you're gonna ask, ask me? Ask me the questions, yeah. Why don't I just ask the answer the question you fill it out? Yeah. How far along are you? Well, put your goddamn thing on my stomach and find out. <laughs> it's on the goddamn paper. It's on the paper. Well, and I know she ain't writing on the paper. And but she, it's a, but it's on somebody's piece of paper. She said I'm eight to nine weeks. He said, well, we need to check the baby out to see if the baby all right. She said, so I, I don't, don't give, give a, a D. And the doctor was looking at her like, what? what? And he said, I'm going to have to check you out. She <laughs> said, said, no, you no. ain't. Well, how about old Demonica over there? She going to recover? Yeah, she going to recover. She going to be all right. She was like, dang. dang. He said, no, it's good. She's going to recover. He said, no, <laughs> for no, you, you not is, for me. Not for me. So she walk up out of there, go over there to Demonica's room. Terrorize the hell out of Demonica, talking about something you old bit. So you gonna make it. Oh, oh girl. I did wish you, you died. I wish you had died. She said, why did you try to kill me? I ain't try to kill you. I, I tried try to, to kill, kill us. I am in a living hell. And do you know? I am one crazy B2. So this is gonna make two of us. <laughs> so as long as I'm cra carrying this grandbaby of yours, she said. <laughs> I said, you know what, Melissa? <laughs> Melissa? <laughs> so, <laughs> so then Demonica said, listen, I'm going to cut your mama off. She said, I don't, I don't give a rat say. I don't care. She said, basically, in so many words, I only cared about my daddy. Yeah. Now him dead, you didn't even give me an opportunity to go so they, see him. To say goodbye. To so say I goodbye. Don't, so I don't, I don't give a rat's A about none of y'all. I am Candace right now. My feelings are... And then that guy doing to Monica, well, <laughs> a part that happened. Well, she said, you know what? I got you and this baby. Ah! I said, you know what, Melissa, you funny. She done took her money? <laughs> yeah. Walk out. To Monica going to call a judge and say, listen, hmm. I need a mental health evaluation. I need to get her committed. And then she going to say, oh, dumb B don't even know no, what she, she being set, set up. up. I was like, what's that supposed to mean? I said, well, I missed something. Yeah, I missed something. Because I missed that, and, and you yeah, said, I can't add that. Yeah, you know, how was that a setup? So, I don't know. Well, she almost got you. Yeah. Yeah. So, then we see Candace and, um, no, Hannah and Benny showed up over there at the Artesian Well Hotel. Mm -mm -mm. And she busts up in the room, and she gives Candace the letter that Lil Quincy had wrote. And, of course, Candace, she starts tearing up and whatnot, and, Can and Hannah said, listen, even that baby knew it was time for us to bury the hatchet. You know, I'm, I don't know what else to do. I've apologized. I've tried to move. I prayed. I spoke in tongues and I fasted. And Candace said, I don't give a breath. Say what you got to say to me. Leave. Leave. Go. Both of y'all. And she was like, well, what is it going to take, Candace? What is it going to take? She was like, you dying? I was like, don't. <laughs> yeah. And Candace was like, listen, y'all let them kill my baby. I'm in here turning tricks. I'm doing what I got to do. Y'all can leave. If y'all gonna come in here trying to do an intervention on me, it ain't gonna work today. Y'all need to just go ahead and go. Mm -hmm. Benny said, no, no, no. Mom, mom, come on, let us stay at the like house. Like Benny told her, they should never went over no. there until she calmed down because she's blaming them for it. Yeah. She can't see it was her own fault. It was everybody's fault. I'm gonna stick to my guns. So, um, what else happened? So, yeah, she told her, said, listen, Y'all can go ahead and stay if y'all want to, but this is what I'm doing. I'm ready to turn a trick. I'm ready to turn a trick. And at the end of the day, basically, she told her, you can't judge me because you ain't got scared either. Yep. So, Benny said, listen, you ain't got to stay here. You can come over to Mama's. She got a nice condo, four bedrooms, all of this. She said, you think I'm going to come mm -hmm. over there? At a house that was gifted to her by and her a, master. By her master? <laughs> said, you wrong for that. I said can to stop stop watching our reviews uh -huh. <laughs> and she was like never ever would i do something like that i said well can't <clears> sleep <throat> with people for money ain't too much about them but it is what it is mm -hmm. so next thing we know there's a knock 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 on the door Candace goes over there and opens the door and it's old boy from down in the lobby yeah, from he, earlier yeah he read it he, he came, coming he, he coming said, down on the knees though he said i think i got the wrong room 
We should, that's, that was red flag number one. Yeah. Yeah, so Hannah's looking at him. Benny's looking at him. And Benny was like, no, no, no. You need to leave. leave. Homeboy was like, yeah, I'm about to leave. Candace was like, no, you stay. They leave it. So everybody trying to make everybody leave. And at the end of the day, Hannah said, stop it. That's your father. It's like, what the hell? Like, what the, what the hell? Like, what? Now this, this, this changes the whole dynamic of the way that she go hard, so hard on freaking Candace about her indiscretion. How's that gonna change it though? Because she already knew she, she said she didn't know who her father was, so she, we already knew that part. No, but what I'm saying is she hid it from her and she almost slept with her daddy. That's the price. So I hope y'all... If you doing, if you got that bullshit going on in your life, you better let your kids know. Yeah. For they've been a brought they daddy home and said, Mama, hey. it's my new boyfriend and we in love and we about ready to get married. How you gonna explain that bullshit? Huh? You do it now for too late. I said, Oh my god. Huh. Oh, and Candace did, she she blamed Benny too, said you made me give my baby to her. And my baby would have been safe in foster care. I said, somebody else said that too. Mm. <coughs> me. <laughs> it wasn't an ideal situation, but he probably would have been safe and not yeah, he still living been alive. from pillar to post. Yeah, he was still been alive. He, he was basically giving to his grandma to be homeless. And they tricked the system to get him. She stole him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But anyway, y'all don't forget that. Her daddy, way. though? Her daddy, though. That is gross. So if, if Candace, if, if they had never came, oh, oh, man. All right, Tyler. Look, Tyler is he digging in his in his entire bag yeah. of darkness. He trying to turn everybody out. Now he going into the incest. Mm -hmm. He got the kids going on. Got getting people getting getting raped. He gonna uh, be on the most wanted list in about five years. Keep at this pace. Said, show he ain't no pedophile. Don't put you better you better alleged. not be one. You better <laughs> don't not put be one. You but better I not be my, one. <laughs> now don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. We don't we we be forgetting to tell y'all to do that. And now with YouTube doing what they doing, it's important that we tell y'all to rate, comment, comment, and subscribe because every subscription counts. And we love yeah. you all, and don't forget to like um that to subscribe to that other page that we were telling you all about straight from the va the dirty dirty sound two up two down hello, hello.